hello students uh, this is my second lecture on <coughs> transaction processing so uh, when in the first lecture we discussed about uh, the problems that can may arise uh, because of concurrency uh, concurrent execution of the transactions uh, and similarly also we have discussed different recovery techniques uh, reco why recovery is needed basically for uh, the databases so uh, going back to the this uh, starting for, for to start this lecture uh, let's uh, review what a transaction is a transaction is nothing but a atomic unit of work okay uh, that has to be either completed in its entirety or not at all okay uh, so uh, as i told you in the last class itself there is a uh, begin transaction is always bounded by a begin statement and end statement in between, there are different recovery operations like read, write, and of course, the uh, other <coughs> calculations on the data values and all. So, uh, say uh, just for a simple, simpler understanding of what a transition is, let us consider the case of a uh, cash withdrawal from an ATM machine. So, database. A bank database is a huge database having a very huge customer base. So uh, when you go to an ATM machine, suppose when you ins when you insert your PIN there to withdraw some money from the ATM, it's like you know you can assume it to be the beginning of a transaction that you are going to do, and and that kind of transaction ends when the case is delivered to you. So it is completed in its entirety. Either you get the case or you don't get. If suppose some Thing wrong uh, happens in the transaction suppose your balance was not sufficient or the ATM was connectivity of the ATM was not good or something like that then obviously it will lead to a failed transaction otherwise you get the case and it becomes a successful transaction okay so this ha has to happen in its entirety it cannot be you know uh, halfway that is either it is it has to be it will be considered a successful or it will be considered a failed transaction So now if something happens wrong, you need to recover whatever was the original value, earlier values. Suppose if your amount was wrongly deducted in your ATM withdrawal, then that amount has to be readjusted. So there has to be a rollback mechanism. And for this rollback, the transaction always has to keep track of the transaction starts, terminates, terminates commits, or aborts. So depending on all these different uh, the checkpoints you can see when the transaction has started when the transaction is going to terminate or has terminated or what whether the transaction is committed or not how where it has been it has done the commit and the abort if it is um, wh whether the transaction has aborted so all this leads to the for this for recovery purpose all these are very important points important uh, checkpoints you can see okay so system needs to keep track of all these different sequence. Now, during the lifetime of a transaction, the transaction goes through five different states. Active state, partially committed state, committed state, failed state, and terminated state. So these are the five different stages. I'll show you diagrammatically how these five different stages of a transaction are related to one another. The recovery manager of the database keeps tracks of the defined operations within the transactions. Now, what are those points to which it actually keeps track of? That is, the first is where where the transaction has begun. That is the begin transaction statements. It, it, it identifies that a particular transaction has begun. Just with the ATM analogy, you can see when you enter the pin or something like that. You know, it's a beginning of a transaction. So, uh, read or write. Uh, this specifies the, the read or write operations that are executed as part of, part of the transactions. That is, if you are just uh, uh, from the ATM analogy, you can say when you are just uh, uh, requesting the balance check, then obviously say read view. And when you are withdrawing your case, that means you are modifying your current balance in your account. So it is a write operation. Okay. 
So, uh, so these are different read-write operations which are within the limits of the begin transaction, end transaction. End transaction means where it indicates that all the read and write operations are finished, are over. Okay, that indicates the end limit of the transaction execution. Now, when you reach the end limit of the transaction execution, it becomes important for the recovery manager to identify whether the changes that has been done as part of the operations of the transaction has to be permanently applied to the database or not. If it is to be permanently applied, then there is a, it has to commit the transaction. Otherwise, it aborts the transaction. That means if the, <coughs> uh, it, the abort, abort may be because of the different reasons. There may be several reasons for aborting a particular transaction. Maybe it violates the concurrency control or for some other reasons because of which you may have to abort a transaction without permanently applying it to the database. Now, if you if everything is fine, then the changes that are done by the transaction are permanently applied and a commit transaction is issued. Actually, the commit transaction means the is done only when the everything that is being done on the database or changed in the database are written to a log file. Okay, so we'll look uh, in detail about it. So a recovery manager basically keeps track of the this following two operations once uh, end transaction has been uh, reached. So uh, first is the commit transaction means it signals the successful end of the transaction so that any changes or update whatever has been done by the transaction during uh, the previous course of actions can be safely safely committed to the database and will not be undone. That means it, is, it can be safely, the changes can be safely, uh, uh, it, it can be assumed to be saved, you know, safe uh, in, the, uh, in the database. So similarly, if a transaction has actually, uh, because of some reason, the transaction is assumed to be uh, unsuccessful, then the rollback has to be applied. So the recovery manager has to issue a abort operation or the rollback. So this signals that the transaction has ended unsuccessfully. And the changes, any changes that have been done to the by the transactions to the database item has to be undone. Recovery technique also uses these two operators. One is undo. Undo is nothing but actually it is similar to rollback. Only thing is that undo operations op um, operates on a single operation. That is undo applies to a single operation rather than the entire transaction. So if one transaction, one single operation is undone, then it is undo. Similarly, for redo is basically uh, to redoing certain things or some transition operations to ensure that all the operations of the committed transaction have been applied successfully to the database. So you may have some redo. This particular diagram basically shows the life cycle of a transaction. Those five states that we have discussed earlier are shown in terms of a diagram. Now, as you can see, these are different states of the transaction execution. Now, when with the when the begin statement is initiated, that the begin transaction, it goes to the active state. As you can see, this is the active state. And these are the different read write. These are the database access operations. So these are performed within the active state. Then it is the end state, end transaction statement, which indicates that the all this uh, access operation has finished. So it goes to the partially committed state once the end transaction is is uh, operation is executed. So partially committed state. Then if when you when the recovery manager applies or um, database applies the commit operation, it basically goes from the partially committed state to the committed state. So during this phase, all the additional operations like writing to the log file, etc., are being carried out. And then it goes to the committed state. From committed state, it goes to the committed state. So this part from here, this way, up to these three states, and then this one, this indicates the successful execution of the transaction. But after the end transition being issued, before commit, because of some concurrency control measures or something, 
if the, the top transaction has to be aborted, then it, go, it becomes a failed transaction. So whatever changes have been done by this particular transaction has to be aborted, has to be rolled back. So, and then it goes to the terminal state, which indicates that transaction has failed, is a failed transaction. Similarly, the failed transaction can occur also at the active state when there were different read write operations were being executed. There itself, if instead of going to the partial committed state, it can it can be aborted in, in that particular state itself. It goes to the failed transaction and the terminated state. Okay. So this entire diagram indicates the life cycle of a transaction execution. A backup copy of the transaction execution is always kept in a log separately. Okay, that is log keeps track of all the transaction operation that affects the backdoor database item. So whenever there is something has to be recovered, the database recovery manager always contacts the logs. Now, what is how is that log stored? Basically, uh, uh, whenever there is a transaction failure, there is um, Maybe you know the recovery manager has to uh, uh, has to execute the log execution. That is, it has to be brought from the log. So log is basically kept on disk, so it is not affected by any type of failure except the disk of catastrophic failure. So log is separately basically separately stored in a disk, and it is basically stored in a separate medium, in a uh, in large storage medium. So instead of uh, except the disk failure. Or the catastrophic failure log, nothing other failure actually affects the log. And moreover, there are log is actually kept not only one disk. It kept, the logs are kept in many other disks, so that even if one disk fails, then the other disks may be used to recover the database. Uh, and also, in addition to that, the log is periodically, periodically backed up to archival storage. These are like tap like devices where uh, to guard against us catastrophic failure okay so this is how the log management is done and it's a very important concept because the uh, this log plays a very vital role in recovering the state of the uh, earlier state of the, the transition so let's have a look at the type of records that are stored in the log files okay suppose uh, we refer to a particular uh, log file by say uh, um, we refer to a particular transaction with this say name t Okay, uh, so it basically refers to a unique transaction ID as specified here, and we are considering this to be a T. Now, given a transaction T, uh, the log records can be of this sort. The start transaction T is one particular field. Okay, it's a record that uh, the transaction T has started execution. Okay, so the second record in that particular uh, transaction, uh, this log file, can be write item t x old value new value that means uh, there is a write operation which was executed as part of the transaction that is transaction t and the value of x was modified what was its old value and what are this new value what is this new value so this all that, that is that from from under record as part of the transaction operation okay similarly the, there may be a record like you know read item transaction name t and the item x. So if the transaction a read operation was performed on the database item x by the transaction t, that means that particular value will be recorded in the transaction. And finally, the commit t. So t when was it? Uh, when is the transaction t committed? Okay, that is successfully completed. That is recorded in the log file. Or if it is not completed successfully, a failed transaction, then when it is being aborted, you know, the abort operation and the on transition T, these are recorded as these are this from the another record. So <coughs> these are the log records which are stored in the log file for a particular transaction execution. Here it is, we are assuming a particular transaction T for this particular purpose. So now here comes the commit point of a transaction. Now, what is a commit point of a transaction? Commit point is the point where a commit operation can be executed. That means when the transition T is assumed to uh, have completed all the operations, access operations successfully on the database. Okay, All the access operations within it has been successfully committed. And then it is considered safe to be committed. That is the commit point. 
beyond the commit point, a transaction is said to be committed. Okay, and its effect is assumed to be permanently recorded in the database. So, what the transaction then does is it issues the right. Uh, then it writes an entry commit t. T is the transaction name. Commit is the commit operation into the log. So once this is applied to the log, means everything is done. Or that means the database, the database uh, changes that has been has been permanently saved to the database. Now rollback of transactions. So if not commit point, if it is not in the commit point or commit operation has not been done, commit operation has not written to the log file. Then the transaction, the log file contains only the start transaction T, okay, and there is no commit in the log file. So if it is not found in the log file, then you need to roll back the transactions, okay. So that is the rollback of transactions. Sometimes redoing a redoing the transactions may be necessary. That is. Whatever operation, write operations have been done or written to the log file and the commit point in the log file have to be redone in the disk. So, uh, so their effect on the database can be redone from the log entries. Uh, at the time of system crash, only the log entries that have been written back to the disk are considered for recovery process. So, because the content of the memory, main memory may be lost. If the system crash occurs, the volatile memory may be lost. So, in that case, only log entry comes to our rescue. That is, only the log entries will be considered to retrieve the crash, the lost values of the database. Okay. Uh, Sometimes, force writing of the log is also required. That is, before the transaction reaches its commit point, any portion of the log that has not been written to the disk yet must now be written to the disk. That is, if some when the, when we reach a commit point, if suppose some operations are is yet to be written, those operations have to be completed. Then only we go for writing the commit operation in the log file. And this particular process is called as the force writing of a log. Okay. Without writing all the operations in the transactions, whatever the operation will be performed in the operation as part of the transaction to the log file, no commit operations can be written. So this process is called force writing the log file before committing a transaction. Finally, let us discuss about the acid properties of a transaction. What are acid properties? The first property of the transaction is atomicity. I have already told you, atomicity uh, means a transaction is an atomic unit of processing. That is, either it is performed in its entirety or not at all. So this is what is known as atomicity. So this is one of the property of the very important property of the transitions. Okay. Next is the consistency preservation. That is, a correct execution of the transaction must take the database from one consistent state to another. So while execution of the transaction is in progress, the state of the transaction of the database, uh, sorry, um, database must be in a very, very consistent one. That is, the transaction operation has to lead a database from one consistent state to another. There, any inconsistency cannot be allowed. This is another property of the transitions. Okay. Isolation. That is, a transaction should not make its update visible to the other transaction until it is committed. So the transaction is should be something like a black box where until it is being committed, the transaction is committed, no other transaction should be able to know what operations are being executed by the transaction, what values are being updated by a transaction. Okay. That is called as the isolation. So when this kind of isolation property is enforced very strictly, it solves basically the temporary update problem that we discussed earlier and also the makes the cascading rollback of transactions unnecessary. Cascading rollback of transaction means one real rollback leading to another rollback that is called as the cascading effect. So uh, if isolation property is followed strictly, 
this kind of problem will not arise. So this is another property, isolation. Durability and permanency. Once a transaction changes the database and the changes are committed, these changes must never be lost because of subsequent failure. So uh, once the transaction changes some values in the database and these changes are committed, the commit operation is very even, that means then these changes must never be lost because of subsequent later on the, the any failure occurs for any part of the other transactions this change values of the committed uh, um, committed uh, items database items should not be lost it has to be very very permanent so that is the basic meaning of a commit operation and that leads itself to the property of the durability or permanency so uh, we assume that any transaction which has committed on a particular um, after execution of a particular transaction whenever it is being committed the values are stored done changed permanently and they are stored you know uh, in a safe location so these are basically the four properties from the first alphabet you can say this is called as the acid a c i b so atomicity consistency preservation isolation durability and permanency these are four very important properties of transactions.